Welcome to Tech Rewind, the series where we take a look at devices from the past to see if they're still worth your hard-earned cash. I'm your host, Mark Spurl, and today we're gonna dig into the iPhone 13 Pro, a phone that would have cost you an eye-watering 1,000 US dollars if you bought it brand new, but today just costs a fraction of that price. There are 10 categories in the Tech Rewind scoreboard. If the iPhone 13 Pro receives a 70 or higher, it gets my stamp of approval and you should buy it. If it does not, however, you should probably take that money and put it into something better. Ready? It's time for Tech Rewind. The first category on the board is design, and from an appearance standpoint, the iPhone 13 Pro still looks pretty modern. Of course, that has a lot to do with the fact that Apple has not had a major design refresh since the iPhone 11, but I digress. The color choice in the 13 Pro series was this matte Sierra blue, which is still my favorite iPhone Pro color to date. It's got some glossy stainless steel side rails, which are squared off, and although they pick up fingerprints really well, it seems to have held up nicely over the past couple of years. Flipping the phone over, we're back to notch land. And although Apple did make the notch a little bit smaller in the 13 Pro compared to the 12 Pro, it's still a pretty thick cutout, especially if you compare it to the dynamic island in the newer iPhones. In category number two, we test the durability, first by dunking it in some water and then smashing it off the ground in a three and six foot drop test. Now the iPhone 13 Pro is IP68 rated for water and dust resistance, and it can supposedly survive being dunked in water six meters deep for half an hour. Unsurprisingly, our quick dunk in water a few inches deep did not damage the iPhone in any way, and it also sustained no scratches, no chips, no cracks, or anything like that from our three and six foot drop test. Full pass for the iPhone 13 Pro. Now let's check out the display. The iPhone 13 Pro is equipped with a 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED display that's a little bit higher than 1080p in resolution, and it runs at a high refresh rate of 120 hertz. This was the first high refresh rate iPhone from Apple, and it's a very welcome feature as it makes the whole phone feel much faster than a lot of other iPhones. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the performance section of this review. As usual, this OLED display looks fantastic. It's nice and sharp, colors look vibrant, and the the contrast is excellent due to the OLED nature of the display where the black pixels are turned off completely. By the way, this video isn't sponsored, but if you want this wallpaper, you can support the channel by clicking on the join button down below and becoming a channel member. You'll get lots of other wallpapers that I'll be uploading every single week, including this one. The notch does get in the way a little bit when watching full screen video, but surprisingly, it's actually not as bad as the dynamic island is on the newer phones. That little pill-shaped notch sticks out a little bit further than these notches do. Now, the bezels on the 13 Pro are a little bit bigger than the ones found on the 15 series phones, but that's really not a big deal in my opinion. Next up are the speakers. The iPhone 13 Pro has a set of stereo speakers, one up here by the earpiece and then one on the bottom of the phone. They work in tandem to produce a stereo sound and it sounds quite nice. They're not the best sounding speakers I've heard on a phone. It's a little bit tinny and it does distort up at high volumes, but given the relatively small size of the 13 Pro, it's pretty decent overall. Category number five is performance, and this is a big one for the 13 Pro. Inside this phone, we have an A15 Bionic CPU paired with six gigs of RAM. The A15 Bionic is still a fantastic chip today. I've played many games on this phone, as well as even emulated some games to great results. I've had minimal frame drops or hangups while playing any of those games, and absolutely zero when just navigating around the phone or opening apps. Because this phone has a 120 hertz display, it feels so much faster than the older iPhones. In fact, it actually feels faster than my newer iPhone 15 too, the non-pro version that has the 60 hertz display. Animations are so much smoother and less jerky, and once you go high refresh rate, it's really tough to go back. I've actually switched to this 13 Pro as my main phone because I enjoy using it more than my iPhone 15. The sixth category is an underrated one. It's software updates. This is a big part of what's gonna determine the longevity of your phone, and luckily, Apple has a decent track record for keeping their devices updated over a long period of time. The iPhone 13 Pro is projected to be supported until at least the end of 2026, giving it an eight on the scoreboard. At this stage in the game, the 13 Pro is doing great with 51 points on the board, but it still has 19 more points to earn and only four categories to go. So let's move on to category number seven, the one that everybody loves, it's camera time. 
The iPhone 13 Pro has one 12 megapixel camera on the front and three 12 megapixel cameras on the rear, a wide, ultra wide, and 3x telephoto. The shots from the 12 megapixel main camera definitely do have a bit of a disadvantage in the sharpness department compared to the newer 48 megapixel main cameras found in the iPhone 14 Pro and 15 Pro, but that doesn't mean that the iPhone 13 Pro can't take great pictures. It's got plenty of contrast while using the rich contrast preset in photographic styles, and colors for the most part are very true to life. Low light is also pretty decent with minimal noise. The main camera does have a bit of an issue keeping everything in focus when shooting up close though, and that 3x telephoto is noticeably less sharp than the other two lenses. If I take two pictures at different distances so that the subject appears the same size, look at the difference in overall image quality between the 1x and 3x cameras. It's not great, and you can definitely see that lack of quality in some of the telephoto shots coming from this phone. The front-facing camera is pretty good though, especially in portrait mode where the software does an excellent job of determining what should and what shouldn't be in focus, and the video quality of this phone is still excellent. I would happily use this phone today to shoot video for this channel if I needed to. Battery life is something that's always gonna be important to many of you, and I actually have some good news for you. So this iPhone 13 Pro has been heavily used over the past two years, and its battery life is sitting at around 86% of its original capacity. Despite that, it actually managed to beat my brand new iPhone 15 Pro in my standardized battery test. It finished the test with 33% left versus the 15 Pro at 32%. The iPhone 13 Pro has a battery capacity of just shy of 3100 milliamp hours, so it's not huge, but the A15 inside is very power efficient, leading to some decent battery life overall. In my testing, I've been getting all day battery life with no issues whatsoever. We are down to the wire now with our ninth category, charging. Apple has been pretty laid back about charging speeds across the board. I mean, they've been claiming the standard 50% in 30 minutes ever since the iPhone 8, I think, and they've never really been pushing much farther than that. With a 20 watt charger, the iPhone 13 Pro charges from completely dead to full in just over an hour and a half. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. Luckily, the 13 Pro also has access to MagSafe, giving you access to a whole new line of charging accessories and mounting options. It's definitely one of the coolest things that they've done to the iPhones in the last few years, in my opinion. And along with the Qi standard wireless charging capability, it gives the iPhone 13 Pro a couple of extra points in this category. The final category is value, and it's one of the most important categories on the board. When this phone was new, it retailed for around a thousand US dollars plus tax. Now we all know that iPhones were retain their value a little bit better than most Android phones. Whether that's justified or not is a completely different discussion for another date, but the iPhone 13 Pro is currently going for around 500 to 600 bucks on the used market. That is not cheap. And while the 13 Pro is a great phone, having to spend that much money for a two year old used phone is definitely gonna dock some points in this category. You can get an S21 Ultra for a couple hundred bucks less than that. And that in some ways is actually a better phone. So after earning a total of 77 points here on Tech Rewind, the iPhone 13 Pro earns my stamp of approval. If you like this video, check out the Tech Rewind on the S21 Ultra over here. And if you have a phone in mind that you want tested on this series next, let me know in a comment down below. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a great day.